for the second chapter of the bank project, we'll begin with a focus on the recording and managing of videos. There are two ways to capture permanent images. First, using servers. Second, using standalone network video recorders. The advantages of servers include no bandwidth limitation, no CPU limitation, as well as no graphic limitation. But perhaps the most important feature of them is that in the event of a breakdown, there's a greater possibility of supplying same or similar parts. In this case, the IT managers, the bank experts or the backing contractors can easily replace the desired piece, such as a main board, power supply, or graphics card. But don't forget that servers also need some supplementary software. As we know, it is possible to install Windows and Linux software on servers. We can get licensed Windows software depending on our needs like Genetech, Milestone, Axon, or install and use native and local software like an observer on the server. It's important to make sure that you should not use the server to view images under any conditions. The images of the branch must, of course, be handled through the management system or the system that is embedded in the rack. Here, an all-in-one system might be an economical choice. Since the servers, as they are called so, are mainly for the purpose of capturing images and recording videos through servers, which can cause major problems, such as system viruses or CPU usage. Video surveillance companies have launched a variety of 4K series network video recorders at a decent price. So the use of servers and software will only make sense in large projects with more than 100 cameras. Therefore, standalone network video recorders are very common and affordable in projects under 50 cameras. For example, for a bank branch with 20 cameras, a 32-channel network video recorder is recommended, which costs at least one-third to one-tenth the price of a licensed server and software. So we suggest that since the number of the cameras of the bank branches is typically between 12 and 30 devices, the best option is to use standalone network video recorders with the Linux operation systems. Why Linux? The answer is, if we're going to get Windows operation system, the Windows software is getting more CPU resources and needs more powerful hardware. So it might be better to use the Linux-based network video recorders than the Windows-based network video recorders. Then, since the Linux-based network video recorders available on the market are usually 8, 16, 32, and 64 channels, to set 25% of network video recorder capacity released for flexible performance, we recommend the 8-channel network video recorder for very small counters and branches with up to 12 cameras, 16-channel network video recorder for small bank branches with up to 24 cameras, 32-channel network video recorder for medium-sized banks, and 64-channel network video recorder for large banks with up to 44 cameras. Of course, it is worth point out that some of the big companies have a market share, producing economically viable products that we do not offer in the banking system at all. Next, it is required to know how many hard drives we need for storage. Unfortunately, we cannot answer this question because every bank has its own instruction. And it depends on what cameras with what resolutions we need in our plan at the branch. All things including resolution, frames, and compression codec are summed up in the camera bandwidth. So, assume if we fixed a 2 megapixel to 5 megapixel camera with a bandwidth of 3 megabit per second to record continuously. It needs 384 kilobyte per second. 1.4 gigabyte per hour, equivalent to 33.2 gigabit per day as well as 1 terabyte of storage per month. By this account, we can roughly estimate that each camera requires about 1 terabyte of space per month, which means that if there are 24 cameras in our branch, we could need 24 terabyte of hard drives. 
In this way, using 4 to 10 terabyte hard drives could be a reasonable suggestion for such projects. So, according to the calculation, 60 channel network video recorder with 2 6 terabyte hard drives, 32 channel network video recorder with 4 6 terabyte hard drives, and 64 channel network video recorder with 8 6 terabyte hard drives are good choices for a bank branch. Keep in mind that the hard drives must be of a special type of permanent video surveillance systems. For instance, Seagate Company, under the Guardian and Skyhawk series, has offered logical and acceptable products to the market. Besides, in terms of recording videos, we should not only record on the basis of motion detection, but also record all the other events as many as possible such as region entrance, line crossing, human detection, and so on. And for more security, we could also activate the network video recorder RAID. For example, if we have a hard drive with RAID 1, half of our storage will duplicate the other half, which increases the security of image capture in this case. Definitely, the cost will also increase as if we have 4 to 6 terabyte hard drives with a total of 24 terabyte, 12 terabyte involved in image capture, and over the other 12 terabyte, the same as the previous 12 terabyte of data. Of course, if RAID 5 is enabled in this system, we can have 6 terabyte for backup and 18 terabyte for capturing images. However, Definitely, the CPU usage for RAID 5 is more than that of RAID 1. To increase the security of the system, there is a need to have a number of cameras equipped with the memory card so that if the recording is not performed by the server or the network video recorder for any reason, the recording will be performed on the memory. Try to buy the equipment that is equipped with automatic network replenishment the system works in such a way that if for any reason the network video recorder is turned off while recording the images, the recording starts on the memories and when the network video recorder returns to the network, the images from the memory card transmit to network video recorder automatically. Another issue is the frame rate of cameras. We recommend not to be below 20 frames per second. For exterior cameras, 25 frames per second to 50 frames per second for input cameras and face recognition. 20 frames per second for counter cameras and client side space cameras. 15 frames per second for employee space cameras and branch head and finally 5 frames per second to 10 frames per second for the cameras in staircases, archives and warehouses. According to experience, the best place to monitor camera images is to place a 20 to 22 inch monitor on the bank director's desktop. In some systems, the monitor is placed in racks, which of course is not recommended to do so. Because if the system fails for any reason, the head of the bank branch will be notified via his own system more quickly than he or she wants to go to the system in the rack. In addition, special devices and even software launched that there could be always accessing to the internet. In this case, if for any reason these devices or software can't receive a response from the cameras and recorders, they alert the branch staff to this failure. There are two ways to view videos. First, direct connection. In this way, since network video recorders have HDMI and VGA output ports, the easiest and least costly way is to view images directly from the recorders themselves. Second, network connection. But in this way, we need to provide a separate computer to the head of the branch. The first method can be used for most of branches and counters, and just use an HDMI cable from the rack on the branch desk as well as a wireless mouse to control the device. Well, the second method, which is the Euro way, is used by the public. Now. It doesn't matter if the recorder is a server or a network video recorder. Thank you very much for joining us in this section.